Rockies for the rubber match in this three-game series, the first of the 1969 season. Today, it'll be left-hander Larry Jaster for the Expos and young right-hander Gary Gentry making his Major League debut for the New York Mets. Larry Jaster has a lifetime record of five victories and two defeats against the Mets last year. He beat them twice and was beaten twice while with the St. Louis Cardinals. Jaster, of course, was drafted by the Montreal Expos on the on April on October 14th in the National League draft. Well, working with me on the play-by-play -play broadcast of today's game is Dave Van Horn. And Dave, how about stepping in to say hello? All right, Russ, thank you very much, and good afternoon once again, everybody. Well, it's cool, the skies are overcast, a bit cloudy, but the weatherman says he's going to cooperate this afternoon, so we should get this one in okay. It's been very interesting in the Eastern Division. We've got Chicago and Pittsburgh without a loss after the first two days. And the Mets and uh, our ball club, the Expos, of course, split this two-game uh, series so far with one game to go today is the third game of the series and then uh, Philadelphia and St. Louis still looking for a victory so uh, what we've been saying all along prior to the start of the season uh, starting to come true and I think it'll be very exciting throughout the year to watch this divisional play because uh, be a lot more action a lot more excitement to have uh, two races to watch in each leg rather than just the one so we're off to a great start in this 1969 baseball season beginning of the second 100 years professional baseball we've had two dandies for you disappointing of course that we couldn't have brought you two wins in the first two games of this series but we've got high hopes today with a great left-hander Larry Jaster going out on the mound today against the young rookie Gary Gentry so this should be a real interesting ball game and one that we're looking forward to bringing to you this afternoon we'll meet today's guest Expo's first baseman, Bob Bailey, after this message. Well, it's hard to believe that Major League Baseball is here. The brand new Expos take on the old famous National League stars, and there'll be special fun dates, music and entertainment, and excitement will happen at every game on the Jerry Park turf in North End, Montreal. We'll have fun and music before and during every game, and a whole cavalcade of special days and nights are being planned throughout the season. Get with the big league happenings at every Expos game. Everybody's getting tickets for Expos baseball. And there's a ticket office near you. Call Montreal, area code 514, the telephone number 875-2300 for the ticket office nearest you. Get your tickets at any location in minutes by TRS computers. You can get seats of your choice for any Expos home game with no waiting. The price is right, the games are great, so come on out to Jerry Park. And a reminder that the Jerry Park ticket office will open at noon on Monday and remain open all season long. Well, standing by with his pregame guest, the leading hitter in the Expos lineup, first baseman Bob Bailey with Dave Van Horn. Bob, now that we're underway and got a couple of games under our belt, uh, how do you feel about the start of the season? I know you have to feel pretty good. You've been hitting the ball well. Well, I, I am happy about the way I started off, and uh, I was particularly pleased that we could uh, win the, the opening day ball game. And uh, once we get that first win under our belt, now we can just go ahead and relax, and uh, the other ones are going to come a little easier. That really broke the ice, didn't it? Most of the players that I talked to, uh, for example, John Bateman said he never remembered being as nervous or tight before a ball game started than that one. Uh, there seemed to be a, a great team unity and a great uh, strong feeling and a will to win uh, for Montreal in that first one. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, just in the short time we've all been together, I think we have a real uh, team pride, and uh, we're all uh, trying to win, and uh, we think we can win a lot of ball games. Let me ask uh, about Bob Bailey. Bob, what kind of starter are you now? You've gotten off to a good start uh, this year. Are, are you a good, quick starter? No, I've, I've never gotten off to a good start. Uh, uh, in 1964, uh, I got off to a good start, and uh, since I've been in baseball, uh, that's the only good start I've ever had. So I'm uh, just hoping if I can get off to a good start, uh, the second half of the season has always been when I've played my best. Bob, how about... Uh playing first base now do you feel more comfortable does it help your hitting and your whole attitude when you stick to one position or have you found that uh, moving around to whatever position you can help the ball club most in uh, doesn't bother you that much 
Well, I think probably if you can stay one position, it'll help you. Uh, it's, it's got to, but I've never minded moving around. I think that uh, it's probably hurt me, but uh, I've always had problems with defense anyway, and uh, uh, I like it at first base real well now. I was going to ask you that, uh, now that you've had a chance to stick there for the last several weeks anyway, uh, how comfortable you do feel at first, say, as compared to uh, third base? Well, I, I think that uh, the position is, is an easier position than third base. Uh, third base is one of the toughest positions on the field to play. Uh, but of course, any position that you play in the big leagues, if you're going to play it right, it's a tough position. But there's it's just, uh, relatively speaking, it's a little easier than third base. All right, Bob, uh, let's move on and talk about baseball in general here for just a minute. Uh, how do you feel about the divisional play this year? Well, I think it's an exciting thing. Uh, I, I, when we get to the end, when we get to the end, of the end of our season and we have our divisional playoffs, I think there'll be a tremendous amount of interest, and uh, it's going to keep the pennant uh, race uh, winner uh, up in the air until the very end. Right, the way they've got the schedule up, when you get down there toward the end of the year, anybody that's involved in a race is going to be battling uh, with the other contenders. Right, there might be four teams uh, that are going to have a chance to win the pennant. It's going to be a very thrilling thing. All right, now, as a hitter, I know you've only had a couple of days plus spring training uh, to look. How about the new rule in baseball, uh, the mound? Have you noticed any difference? Of course, here, uh, this has been like a shooting gallery the last couple of days, and we might say, yeah, it's made a heck of a difference. Uh, the starters are having trouble staying in a ball game in this park. But uh, seriously, considering spring training and everything else, Bob is a hitter. Uh, can you see a difference? I don't think it'll make uh, any difference whatsoever. Uh, maybe some of the older pitchers who are so used to the other uh, mound, it might have a little effect on them. But I think they'll make the adjustment. Uh, the big thing would be if the umpire stayed with the new strike zone. They moved the strike zone up a little bit. And I think that's the best thing they could do to help the hitters, would be to make the pitchers throw the ball up. All right, we'll continue our talk with Bob Bailey in just one minute. Major League Baseball is here, and there'll be special fun dates, music, and entertainment at every Expos game this year. Fun and music before and during every game, and a whole cavalcade of special days and nights are being planned. Ladies' days, camera days, there'll be teen nights, fat days, father and son nights, ball day, and even know your neighbor night. Get with the big league happenings at every Expos game this year. Major League Baseball is here in a big way. Everybody's getting tickets for Expos Baseball. They're now on sale near you. You can get yours in minutes. TRS computers do the work for you. You get the seats of your choice for any Expos home game with no waiting. Call 875-2300 for the computer or ticket office nearest you. The best buy for your entertainment dollar is Expos Baseball all season long at Cherry Park. Public transportation to the stadium and several adjoining parking lots for your auto. Big League Baseball has come to Montreal. The Expos first baseman, Bob Bailey. Bob, uh, from here we go on to Chicago now to open up a set with Leo DeRoche's Cubs over the weekend. Uh, how have you fared against the Chicago pitchers? They've got quite a staff over there, haven't they? Yeah, they have real good pitching. Uh, uh, Wrigley Field is a, is a real good place to hit. I've never hit there as well as I uh, thought I should. But uh, these things can change. They have real good pitching over there. They have a real good ball club, period. How about uh, now that you mentioned a ballpark and one that you like to hit in, have you had a chance at all to see Jerry Park in Montreal? No, uh, we were going to go over there the other day uh, that we had the parade, but we just didn't make it. All right, what are the parks in the National League uh, that are your favorites? Well, the Houston Park is my all-time favorite. That's uh, I, I used to like the old St. Louis Park, and, uh, and I like the new St. Louis Park. I'd say the Houston, uh, though, was, had to be my favorite. All right, now, there are some fans that are going to ask themselves a question. Uh, why does a park make a difference? All right, the logical answer is the distance to the lines and the power alleys and center field and so forth. But uh, let's go into it a little bit deeper than that, Bob, uh, in about a minute here. Uh, what, what makes a park a, a hitter's favorite? Well, I think a lot of times it depends on the kind of hitter you are. If you hit line drives and, and ground balls, you want to hit someplace where the outfield is deep and the infield's fast. And uh, particularly in Houston, they have a fast infield. And another big item is the background, the hitting background. Uh, in your good ballparks to hit, like New York here, they have a real good hitting background. You can see the ball well. And uh, this is probably the most important thing of all. 
Well, Bob Bailey, again, congratulations on uh, the opening day victory and the fine start that you've gotten off to, and we wish you and the Expos continued success. Okay, thank you. We'll have today's starting lineup after this final message. Well, a question being asked around the Expo office by telephone from uh, Montreal baseball fans, also those down in the northeastern United States, and our many baseball friends up in the Ottawa area is, can we purchase season tickets after the season gets underway? The answer is yes. And the number to call is 875-2300 in Montreal. The area code is 514. And as mentioned uh, many times in the past few days, the Expo's ticket office at Jerry Park will open at noon on Monday and remain open all season long. As far as bleacher seats are concerned for opening day, 1,000 bleacher seats will go on sale on Monday at Jerry Park. Any further ticket information required uh, may be obtained by calling the Expos or writing to the Expo Baseball Club, 1010 St. Catherine Street West in Montreal. The telephone number, 875-2300. Well, the only change in the lineup, as far as the Mets are concerned, we'll have uh, Ron Swoboda inserted in the lineup today. He'll be playing in left field, and Cleon Jones will move to first base. Ed Cranepool has been removed from the lineup. As far as the Expos are concerned, there was some question as to whether or not Gary Sutherland could play. In the eighth inning yesterday, he had a slight muscle pull to, in his left thigh, but uh, Gary said he felt fine in warming up before the game, and he will be batting number two, his uh, normal spot in the order. Of course, the left-hander Larry Jaster making his first appearance of the 1969 campaign against the rookie Gary Gentry, who makes his first ever Major League appearance. The Mets had a 28-27 record against the left-handers last season, and Ed Charles was the leading Mets hitter against left-hand pitching with a 350 average, so Jaster Jaster's got his work cut out for him here this afternoon. The Mets have shown well against left-handers. Well, that's about it. We, again, would like to thank Expo's first baseman, Bob Bailey, for being our guest. And right now, stay tuned for Expo's Baseball. Students, today, students, as loyal cigarette smokers, let's discuss certain little drawbacks we all have to face. For instance... Of course, cigarette smoking causes lung cancer and heart disease. The doctors don't have to keep harping on that. We all know that. And we all know that cigarettes aren't the only troublemakers either. <laughs> For example, I know a man who broke his back merely bending over to tie a shoelace. But do you hear the doctors telling us to give up wearing shoes? <laughs> of course not. And they go on and on about how cigarettes cause shortness of breath, putting an added burden on the heart. Well, I say the heart was put there to work, and it had just better get to work or get out. Now then, let's all light up and enjoy a good smoke. <laughs> For more on cigarette smoking, call your American Cancer Society. And watch the Expos play ball. The thing to do this season is to play at an Expos party. Your family and friends, or all the baseball fans on your block, or your club, your class, or your business group. Plan a day or a night at Jerry Park several times this season. Call the Expos and ask for the group sales department, area code 514-875-2300. Let them take care of all the details. You know well over a million fans will be heading for Jerry Park this season. We want you to be among them. You'll see the stars of the National League all season long at Jerry Park. Willie Mays, Pete Rose, Bob Gibson, Juan Marichal, Ron Santo, Billy Williams, Ernie Banks, Don Drysdale, Lou Brock, Kirk Flood. You'll see them all in action all season long at Jerry Park as they take on our Expos. Fans, Major League Baseball is here. Well, here are the starting lineups for this afternoon's game between the uh, Montreal Expos and New York Mets. For the Expos, leading off and playing shortstop, the veteran Maury Wills. Maury is hitting 333 at the moment. Batting in the number two slot, uh, still looking for his first major league hit of the afternoon. Of 
the season, I should say, uh, second baseman Gary Sutherland. Batting third, well, the fellow who's swinging the big stick for the X-Falls, right fielder Rusty Staub. Rusty is currently hitting 500 and has hit two home runs. Batting fifth for the X-Falls will be left fielder Mac Jones, currently hitting 375. Bob Bailey bats uh, fifth for the X-Falls. Uh, Bailey is the club's leading hitter at 556. Batting in the sixth spot will be catcher John Bateman, currently hitting 222. Following Bateman in the batting order, Coco Laboy, the third baseman. Coco is hitting at a 375 clip and has hit one home run. Leads the club in runs batting in with four. The center fielder, Don Hahn, follows next. Hahn uh, is hitting 167. He got his first major league hit yesterday and knocked in two runs. Uh, pitching for the X-Balls this afternoon, left-hander Larry Jaster with a career record of 32 victories and 25 defeats. He has beaten the Mets five times in his career. For the New York Mets this afternoon, leading off and playing center field, center fielder Tommy Agee currently hitting 333 with four runs batted in in the two games so far. Number two in the Mets batting order, right fielder Rod Gaspar. Gaspar is hitting an even 500 in the two games. Batting third, second baseman Ken Boswell. Boswell is hitting 571. Hit a home run yesterday against the Expos. The cleanup man for the Mets, Cleon Jones. Jones has been moved from left field to first base. He'll be playing first base this afternoon. Jones is hitting 444. Batting fifth in the lineup for the New York Mets, veteran third baseman Ed Charles. Charles is hitting at a 286 clip. Following Charles and making his first regular appearance for the Mets in left fielder in left field, big Ron Swoboda. Swoboda made one appearance uh, in the series so far. He's 0 for 1. Following Swoboda is catcher Jerry Grody, currently hitting 571 for the Mets. Grody has knocked in three runs in the two games. The shortstop, one of the slickest fielders in the National League, Bud Harrelson, hitting 250, and batting ninth is the pitcher, Gary Gentry. So those are the starting lineups, and we're going to take an opportunity to pause for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. Now back to Expo Baseball. Well, a pregame conference between the umpires and the competing managers is taking place at home plate here at Shea Stadium. Gene Mock for the Expos and Gil Hodges for the Mets. The umpires, Bill Williams behind the plate. The umpire at first base will be Nick Colosi. At second base, Tom Garman. And at third, the veteran Stan Landis. Shea Stadium in New York. A cloudy day here and definitely top coat weather. The New York Mets draw a big cheer from the crowd as they trot out over the field for the start of today's game. Hodges returns to his seat in the Mets dugout and Gene Mock hands in his pocket, heads into the dugout behind the third baseline, the dugout of the Montreal Expos. We'll be keeping you up to date on all the activity in the other town scores. The Washington Senators are leading the Yankees 4 to nothing In the bottom half of the fourth inning, Frank Howard has hit his third home run. Allier also hit a home run for Washington in the first with one aboard. Pittsburgh against St. Louis, the scoreless tie in the bottom half of the second inning at St. Louis. It's 2-1 for Detroit over Cleveland in the bottom half of the second inning at Detroit. Now the national anthem.
stepping in to take his pregame warm-up pitcher, Gary Gendry. A big day for Gary Gendry of the New York Mets, making his major league debut. Gentry last year with Jacksonville in the International League, won 12 and lost 8. He started in 30 games. In spring training, uh, Gentry has won 3 and lost none, pitching 24 innings for the Mets, an earned run average of 3.75, a lot higher than Gary would like it, but that was just spring training. Today he starts it for real, this afternoon against the Montreal Expo. The first man Gentry will face will be the KG Maury Wills. Wills this afternoon against the right-handed offerings of Gary Gentry will be batting left-handed. Maury Wills off to a great start with the Expos. He's uh, taking a few practice swings in the on-deck circle with the aid of Elson Howard's uh, special batting uh, uh, donut, they call it. It's a donut, extremely heavy, that they slip over the bat, and it adds weight to them and helps them out in the, uh, the pregame swing. All right, now Maury leaves the on-deck circle and is walking into the batter's box. So stepping up to the microphone to give us the play-by-play of the first part of this game, Dave Van Horn. All right, Russ, thank you very much, and good afternoon once again, everybody. The lights are on here at Shea Stadium to start this game. And against the right-hander, Gary Gentry, Maury Wills, the switch hitter, will bat left-handed. Swoboda is in left. A.G. in center, Gaspar in right field for the Mets. Gentry is about to make his first major league pitch. Young right-hander into the windup, the pitch low inside, ball one to Wills, and this one is underway. Both these clubs have really been hitting the ball in this series so far. The Expos is a team batting 293. The Mets, 386. Here's the fastball swung on and foul back upstairs to the left side. One ball and one strike. Wills will be followed by Sutherland and Staub. We've got, uh, I guess, somewhere between 8 and 10,000 here today. Had a little over 14 yesterday for the ball game. Gentry's wind-up and pitch. It's a little low on that outside corner, the fastball. Two balls and one strike to Mari Wills. Wills is batting 333. He's three for nine in the two games, has driven in two runs, stolen one base. Here's the fastball swung on, and a bounder goes to the right side. Boswell, second baseman, has it. Throws to Jones at first, and Wills is retired. One away, and that'll bring Gary Sutherland to the plate. To mention, Ed Cranepole is out of the lineup today. Cleon Jones taking over at first, and Swoboda in left field. Sutherland, a right-hand hitter. They look for him to hit to the opposite field. Pitch swung on, high fly ball down the right field line over in foul territory. Giving chase near the stands is Jones, but it's about eight or ten rows up in the box seats. And no chance for the play. No balls in one strike to the batter, Gary Sutherland, who pulled a muscle in his left thigh yesterday, but Gary's heavily taped and says feels okay. Bobby Wine, who joined the ball club two days ago from Philadelphia, thought that he might get to see some action today. Here's the pitch and a breaking ball high inside. One ball and one strike. Sutherland looking for his first hit in 11 trips to the plate. The fastball swung on and foul. That was off the mask of Jerry Grody, the catcher, too. That'll jar your uppers for you. But you know, catchers, they're a special breed. They're the only ball players that don't get hurt. They're just always shaken up. Another player get hurt, but a catcher just shaken up. Here's a foul ball rolling up the first base line. It drew uh, Gentry over there, Jones and Grody, but they let it go foul. One ball and two strikes now with one out and nobody on. This one just underway here at Shea, the final game of this three-game series with the New York Mets. The Expos return two more times to New York. They play each team in their division. Total of six series, three home, three away. Fly ball, right field, shallow right field. Going back, second baseman Boswell makes the call, and as he pulled it down, he banged right into the 
outfielder Gaspar, who was backing him up. So uh, Boswell probably telling the young rookie, Gaspar, you know, you got to watch that. Listen for me when I call for it. Give me some room. Two down now, and the batter will be Rusty Staub. Rusty has hit two home runs in the first two games. Got one opening day. Got one again here yesterday. A power shot over the right center wall. Here's Gentry's pitch. Straight call, fastball, knee high on the inside corner. 0-1 to Rusty. He's batting 500. He's 4 for 8 with one double, two home runs, three RBIs. He's also been walked three times in this series so far. Breaking ball is low. One ball and one strike. Gentry is just in his third year of pro ball. First year with Williamsport, double-A ball. Second year with Jacksonville in the International League last year. Pitches high and outside. Ball two. Two balls and one strike to Rusty Staub, left-hand hitter. Talking to Yogi Berra, the, one of the Mets coaches, prior to the game, Yogi said, boy, that Staub sure can hit. Yogi, you've seen him before. He said, yeah, but he gets better all the time. Gentry's pitch is high for ball three. Three balls and one strike. Yogi said the same thing that everybody will tell you about Staub. He's got such a beautiful, balanced swing. Outfield around to the right for Rusty. Here comes the pitch. Strike call. Fastball. Just above the knees that split the plate. Beautiful pitch by Gentry. And we have a full count on Rusty Staub with two outs and nobody on here in the first. Three balls and two strikes. Mets really think a lot of this young right-hander, Gary Gentry. Fastball swung on and a high fly out in shallow left field. Backing up is Harrelson, the shortstop. He pulls it in. And it's a three-up, three-down inning for Gary Gentry here in the first. Nothing across. The score after the first half inning of play, Montreal nothing and the New York Mets coming to bat. Well, as you look at the standings in the National League, you see some amazing contrast. The St. Louis Cardinals picked by everybody to win uh, not only the Eastern Division uh, title in the National League this year, but also uh, to win the, uh, the playoff that will eventually take place between the two divisions and go on into the World Series, are currently looking for their first victory. They've dropped their first two games. The uh, St. Louis Cardinals are 0-2. The Pittsburgh Pirates are 2-0. But one of the most amazing things so far, the start of the San Diego Padres in the Western Division. The Padres have won both their starts, the big 2 nothing, and the Houston Astros, one of the established clubs, are 0-2. However, a lot uh, is yet to uh, happen in the National League as the season is only two games old. The club's playing their third games this afternoon. Looking up on the Yellowtown board, Washington is now uh, leading the New York Yankees by the score of 5 to nothing. playing in the third inning. They've had a long home run from Frank Howard. All set to go in the bottom half of the first inning as the New York Mets come to bat and the first man to face left-hander Larry Jaster will be the center fielder Tommy Agee. A lot of people said that Larry Jaster took a step backwards when he came from the Cardinals to the Expos. Larry will not agree with that at all. He feels that it was a great break for him. 25-year-old left-hander could be a key to and, and will be uh, one of the big keys to Expo's success this year. Left-hander Larry Jaster, lifetime against the Mets, 5-2. and two. Here's Tommy Agee, a right-hand hitter, stepping in. The first pitch swung on and missed strike one. Agee is batting 333. He's gone three for nine in this series with four RBIs. He's the RBI leader in the series. Jaster delivers a swing and a miss, strike two. Jaster's got great control for a left-hander. Good fastball, good lively slider, nice breaking ball. He can move the ball around the plate. He's a pitcher with a lot of savvy. Jaster delivers. Breaking ball, low inside. 
One ball and two strikes on the leadoff batter, Tommy Agee. To be followed by Rod Gaspar and Ken Boswell. Here's Jaster's 1-2 pitch. Just missed the inside corner. Two balls, two strikes. In 1966, he won recognition nationally when he shut out the National League champion Dodgers five times and tied a record set in 1916 by Grover Cleveland Alexander. Here's another fastball. Again missing, and he goes to a full count on A.G. Three balls and two strikes. Larry's got a lifetime Major League earned run average of 3.17. Swing and a miss, strike three. Jaster struck him out. So A.G. is out of there, and the batter will be Rod Gaspar. He'll bat right-handed against the left-hander, Jaster. Jones in left, Don Hahn in center, Rusty Staub in right field, around the infield, Jose LaBoy at third, Marty Wills at short, Gary Sutherland at second, and Bob Bailey at first. John Bateman, the catcher, flashes the sign, and Jaster delivers a change-up curve and a strike call. 0-1 to Gaspar. See, Gaspar is hitting 500 in this series. He's gone four for eight. Youngster's gotten off to a good start. Strike called, fastball on the outside corner. James, they've put the lights on here at Shea Stadium. Here it is only 2.50 New York time, and we've got the lights on already. Yogi Barra in the first base coaching box. Eddie Yost at third. Outfield straight away, not too deep for Gaspar. Jaster wasted a pitch, low and outside. One ball and two strikes. On deck is Ken Boswell. Jaster delivers. Fastball swung on. Fly ball out behind third base. LaBoy is under it. Stepped from the edge of the grass and has it. Thought that was going to go a little farther than it did. Just a little pop up in the infield. Two down. And the batter, Kenny Boswell. Left-hand hitter. Boswell batting 571, four for seven in this series with a couple of RBIs. Hit a home run here yesterday. Center fielder Hahn moves around toward right center for Boswell, who swings on the first pitch and it's a bounder. Bailey backhands it, throw to Jaster covering. It's no! Oh no, Jaster in waiting for Bailey to make the throw had a little trouble locating the bag and Boswell's called safe at first. A real close one at first base. So Boswell gets aboard. And that makes way for Cleon Jones. That's ruled as a hit for Boswell, scored as a hit. An infield single. Leon Jones, right-hand hitter. Jaster now with the runner. Boswell at first gives him a look. Deals inside. Ball one. Leon Jones batting 444. He's gone four for nine in the series. Driven in three runs. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Foul. Upstairs. Second deck. Off to the right. One ball and one strike. Morton against Rich Nye tomorrow in Chicago. We're on the air at 10 after 2 from Wrigley Field. The stretch by Jaster, a look at the runner, and a throw to first base. Boswell back in plenty of time. Jaster looking down to Bateman, has the sign. He deals. Took a little something off that pitch, sailed high and outside for ball two. Two balls and one strike. Bateman faked a throw to first. That sent Boswell back to the bag in a hurry. 
Cleon Jones, number four man in the order at the plate. The fastball hit the inside corner about belt high and a strike is called to even the count at two and two. Jaster last year against New York Mets, while Larry was with the St. Louis Cardinals, beat him twice and lost to him twice. The stretch and the pitch. And he missed a little bit outside. Jaster uh, thought he had a strike in there, so did Bateman. Turned around, had something to say to Bill Williams, a plate umpire. A full count now to Jones. Three balls, two strikes. In the on-deck circle, Ed Charles. A throw to first base, and again, Boswell is back. outs, bottom of the first, no score. Chaster delivers, pitch is swung on, sharply hit ball, Wills cannot get to it, going to his right, Jones is up with the ball, the throw to third base will be cut off as Boswell slides in, and Cleon Jones is on with a single. Second hit off Chaster. Well, that close play at first base, looking mighty big right now. Charles, right-hand hitter, steps in. 35 years old, veteran on this club, spent most of his time with Kansas City, batting 286 in the series. Runners at first and third with two outs. The pitch to Charles. A little high, ball one. Two hits now for the Mets. That one just got by Wills, who went back deep in the hole, going to his right, tried to backhand it, couldn't quite get to it. Jaster checks the runners, the pitch swung on, line drive, base hit, left field. This will bring one run in. Mac Jones up with the ball, throw will hold Leon Jones in second. So Ed Charles comes up with an RBI single to left to put the Mets on the scoreboard here in the first inning. Third hit, their first solid single. making his first appearance as a starter. He was used as a pinch hitter the other day and is 0 for 1. Right-hand hitter, Ron Swoboda. A look at the runners at first and second. The fastball swung on and missed strike one. Manager Gene Mock motioning for Bob Bailey to move in a couple of steps. Playing behind the bag at first base. Here's Jaster's pitch. This time it's down low. One ball and one strike. Well, the thing that opened the door on this was Kenny Boswell's infield hit with two outs. Here comes the pitch. Curveball is low inside. Two balls and one strike to the batter, Ron Swoboda. the stretch by Jaster. His pitch swung on, popped up off the right side, out of play into the box seat section. The count goes, two balls and two strikes. A couple of great characters on this Mets ball club, Yogi Berra one of them, and Ron Swoboda the other. I guess Berra and Swoboda stories keep you in stitches all day. Jaster's look at Jones, the lead runner, and his pitch is up around the letters inside. Back Swoboda out of there. Three and two. Here's Jaster's pitch. Swung on, base hit right field. Coming up with the ball is Rusty Stop, and his throw will be cut off in the infield as Jones comes in to score. Swoboda comes up with an RBI single to left, to right. The fourth hit given up by Jaster, and it's 2 nothing. the Mets lead here. Everything happening with two outs here in the bottom of the first. That'll bring Jerry Grody to the plate. Ed Charles moved around to third 
base. So Swoboda's on at first, Charles at third, and Jerry Grody, right-hand hitter, will be the batter. Four for seven in the series, batting 571. Here's Jaster's first pitch. The strike call. 0-1. He holds at the belt. Gives each runner a quick look. Then deals. Pitch swung on. Popped up. Out behind the plate. Bateman coming back, but there's no chance for a play. Into the box seat sections right behind the screen. out in front now, 0-2 on the batter, Jerry Grody. Swoboda, the runner at first, Ed Charles at third. The left-hander is ready. He delivers. Pitch swung on, ground ball, Sutherland has it, throws to first base, and the inning is over. So Grody is out, Sutherland to Bailey. Seven men came to the plate here in the first produced two runs on four hits. No errors in the field, and two were left. The score at the end of one inning of play here at Chase Stadium, New York 2, Montreal nothing. Your best bet for the most fun is a season ticket to watch the Expos play at Jerry Stadium. You save up to 10%, but that's not all. You get choice seats every game. No fuss, no standing in line. Season tickets make great gifts. They're a fine way to entertain friends or customers or business prospects. And for your own pleasure, they're certainly the best. Box seats cost $350. You save $35 if you buy a season box seat. Reserve seats cost $250, which means if you buy a reserve seat for the season, you will make a saving of $19.50. A good idea is to share season tickets with friends. Split the cost, divide the gain, and share the fun. Make your plans and act soon. The price is right. The games are great. So come on out to Jerry Park. Inquire by mail, phone, or in person about buying a season ticket to Jerry Park to see the Expos in action this summer. Call Montreal, 875-2300. We go to the second inning now with the Mets leading 2 nothing. We started off with the number four man in the Expos order, Mac Jones, then Bob Bailey and Bob Bateman. Here's the pitch to Jones. Swung on a foul tip off to the left side. Did I say Bob Bateman? I did, didn't I? Bob Bailey. All right, here's the second offering to Mac Jones from Gary Gentry. This one's inside. One ball and one strike. Mac. In this series, batting 375. He's gone three for eight, has driven in a couple of runs. Pitch. High. Ball two. Two balls and one strike from young Gary Gentry. Umbrellas have popped up and uh, plastic raincoats have been donned here by the fans at Shea Stadium. Just a very light drizzle. A swing and a miss. Strike two on Mac Jones, left-hand hitter. Two balls and two strikes. Right side of the infield, back deep. Right fielder. Gaspar straight away and deep. A.G. swung around toward right center for Mac Jones, the Expos left fielder. Fastball, and he got him. First strikeout for Gary Gentry. That'll bring Bob Bailey to the plate. John Bateman in the on-deck circle. Right-hand hitter, Bob Bailey. Batting 5.56, he's gone. Here's pitch, swung on, and this one hit a towering shot right center. Going back for it is A.G. Now it comes in toward the edge of the track, and he pulled it down. 
just got under it a little too much. Bob hit that ball well to right center. Almost to the warning track before Agee brought it in. Two down. The batter will be John Bateman. Right-hand hitter. He's gotten off to a fine start. First pitch, a fastball, low and inside. Ball one. John right now hitting 222. The rain has started to fall. Lights are on here at Shea. They've been on since the start of the game. Gentry's wind up and pitch. Swung on, and this one hit well. High and deep to right center. A.G. goes back. Still going back. He can't get it. It's a home run for John Bateman. Over the right center wall. About 400 feet away. Right at the base of the scoreboard. So John Bateman gets his first round tripper of the year. Hit one high and far to right center. As John puts the Expos on the scoreboard. And that makes it a 2-1 to one ball game. First man to greet him as John ducked into the dugout was Rusty Staub. Here's Jose LaVoy. And the second man there was Larry Jaster. Larry feels a little bit more comfortable now. The lead is only one run. First hit off Gentry. He'd retired five men in a row. A strike to LaVoy. Jose is a right-hand hitter. Expos third baseman. Batting 375. Gentry, the right-hander, delivers. Curveball is down low. One ball and one strike. Of course, uh, right here early in the season, uh, these averages are going to fluctuate. They're going to go way up and way down. Then, uh, after the season gets a uh, month or so old, they'll start to settle down. Here's a line drive out into left center. Base hit. For Jose LaBoy coming up with it is Tommy Agee, the center fielder, fires into second base. And LaBoy is on with a single. The second hit given up by Gary Gentry. Two outs. Here's Don Hahn, center fielder, batting 167. He's one for six so far with a couple of RBIs. Rain still falling. Not hard enough to call this game right now. Here's the pitch. And a curveball broke beautifully. Strike is called on Don Hahn. No balls in one strike. Two outs here in the top of the second. John Bateman's home run over that right center wall, making it a 2-1 ball game. The Mets still lead, but now there's only one run difference. Gentry delivers down low. One ball and one strike. Don Hahn, right-hand hitter, wears a batting glove on his left hand. Players, a lot of the players are pretty well sold on these batting gloves for a better grip, better feel of the bat. Gentry fired outside this time. Two balls and one strike. Expos trainer Joe Lissio stepping up on the edge of the dugout steps trying to see what the rain's doing out there. Manager Gene Mock down at the end of the dugout. Foot propped up on the second step watching this game. Here's a strike call. Another fine pitch by Gentry, fastball about knee high on the outside corner. That's normally considered the pitcher's portion of the plate, too. Won't find uh, too many hitters that have much success with that. Here's one fouled off to the right. Into the first tier. Two balls and two strikes with two outs and Jose LaBoy, the runner at first. rain here at Shea Stadium. Here's the 2-2 pitch. The fastball's cut on and popped up high into the air. Again to the right side. Out of play. For Don Hahn, the center fielder, Tommy Agee, is around toward right center. Second baseman, Ken Boswell, back within a foot or two, maybe one step at the edge of the grass. Hahn swings and misses a high outside pitch. A little upset with himself that he went after that one. That is strikeout number two for Gary Gentry, and it ends the inning here for the Expos. 
But Montreal's come up with one run on two hits. John Bateman's home run over the right center wall. No errors in the field. One man was left on base after an inning and a half. The Mets two, the Expos one. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. Now back to Expo Baseball. In other action, at Washington, the Senators are leading the Yankees 5 to nothing. The Senators have had two home runs so far, one by Frank Howard, his third of the year, and another one by Al Yee, his first of the year. No score between Boston and Baltimore. They're playing in the top half of the second inning in a game played at Baltimore. Over in the National League, St. Louis is leading Pittsburgh one to nothing in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Other games, Houston at San Diego and Philadelphia at Chicago. Here at Chase Stadium in New York, well, the Expos got on the scoreboard with that long home run by catcher John Bateman over the right center field wall almost 390 feet away. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Network. Shortstop Bud Harrelson swings on the first pitch from Jaster. Grounder to Wills, who's up with it, throws over to Bailey. And that's all for Harrelson. One away. Batter will be Gary Gentry. Gentry's not uh, very big at all. He's a little guy. Six foot, 175, and I think they're exaggerating there a little bit. Appears to be uh, maybe a few pounds lighter than that 175 that they've listed him at. He also bats right. Jaster, the left-hander, delivers. Fastball is swung on and missed by Gentry. Strike one. Two to one ball game, Mets lead the Expos. John Bateman putting the Expos on the scoreboard with a home run. Again, a swing and a miss, strike two. On deck is Tommy Agee. One out and nobody on here in the bottom of the second. Jaster's next pitch is fouled off to the left side and rolls into the Expos dugout. winds it up. The pitch is swung on and missed strike three. That's all for Gentry. Strikeout number two for Larry Jaster. Two down now for Tommy Agee coming to the plate. He was a Jaster strikeout victim in the first. This Met ball club last year really used a lot of players. So the Mets used 54 players, which broke a National League record, by the way. Here's a strike called on a curveball to Agee. The Mets used 54 players. The original record was 53 in one season by the 1944 Brooklyn Dodgers. Fastball high and inside from Jaster to Agee. One ball and one strike with two outs and nobody on here in the bottom of the second. It's a lot of ball players in one season and pitchers. We've talked about the young pitching staff. Jaster is down low with his next pitch, two and one. They used 27 pitchers. That broke the record of 24 pitchers in one season, set by the 1912 Cincinnati Reds and the 1946 Philadelphia Phillies. And it equals the major league mark of the 1915 Philadelphia A's and the 1955 Kansas City A's. Jaster has fallen behind three balls and a strike. He's set the pitch, swung on, and this one is out of here. The left field foul ball caught it. It's a fair Jaster, and again, the Mets are up by two, three to one. 
Two outs, nobody on. A strike called on Rod Gaspar. Right hand hitter. Gaspar popped up to the third baseman, Coco LeBoy, in the first inning. So the cannons continue to roar here at Shea Stadium as they have for three days now. Next pitch is high. One ball and one strike. Larry's ready. The fastball is a bouncer to LeBoy, the third baseman. Throw over to first base. Gaspar is out of there, and the inning is over. That's all for the Mets here in the second, but they came up with another run on one hit. Agee's towering home run down the left field line that was fair by two feet as it hit the screen on the left field foul pole. No errors in the field, nobody left on base. And at the end of two, it's the Mets three, the Expos one. Well, you can't knock the price, it seems to be right. The games, well, you can't knock them so far. We've seen plenty of action here at Chase Stadium in New York. So come on out to Jerry Park and plan an Expos baseball party several times this season. You can watch the Expos play the top teams in the National League. The thing to do in style this season is to plan an Expos baseball party. Your family and friends or all the baseball people on your block or in your club or your class or your business group certainly could have a lot of fun at Jerry Park this year. Plan a day or night at Jerry several times this season. Call the Expos and ask for the group sales department at uh, area code 514, the telephone number in Montreal, 875-2300. Let them take care of all the details. Well over a million fans will be heading for Jerry this season. Be among them. See the start of the National League season, the stars of the National League season, all season long. The start of the season is Monday afternoon as the Expos take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, the New York Mets have taken a 3-1 lead going into the top half of the third inning. The first man up for the Montreal Expos will be pitcher Larry Jaster. Jaster makes his first appearance at the plate. And the young right-hander, Gary Gentry, again with a two-run cushion here as we go to the third. Mets leading 3-1. They've out hit the Expos 5-2. First pitch high and outside. Ball one. Jaster batting left. They move around that way in the outfield for him. They look for him to hit to right field. Fastball swung on and missed. One ball and one strike. The rain continues to fall here at Shea Stadium. The next pitch is swung on. Jaster hits a roller to second baseman Boswell. Up with it. Over to Jones at first. And Jaster is out. One down. So we'll move to the top of the order now. And the batter will be Maury Wills. Wills grounded out in his first appearance at the plate. I know you're anxious to see Maury Wills in action at Jerry Park. I know this team will be as excited about opening day at Jerry Park as they were here three days ago to start the season. Wills takes a called strike, a fastball on the outside corner. 0-1 to Maury. And this is one of the guys that electrifies fans wherever he goes. Maury Wills. Strike two call. Gentry with good control. He's been able to hit that outside corner low and away. Real tough for the hitters to go after that. He fires again, and Wills is called out on three pitches. You won't see that often. Third strikeout for Gentry. That brings Gary Sutherland up for the second time. He popped up to the second baseman, Boswell, back in the first inning. Right-hand hitter. Gentry delivers. The fastball is low. Ball one. Sutherland came to the Expos in the draft, picked up from the Philadelphia Phillies, and then just a couple of days ago saw his former Philly teammate, Bobby Wine, join him in a Montreal uniform. Here's a two-hopper to Ed Charles at third base, who's up with it, throws over to first. And for the second time in three innings, 
Gentry has put down the side, one, two, three. Nothing across to the Expos here in the third. After two and a half, the Mets three, the Expos one. Well, the Pirates have tied that game up in St. Louis, scoring a run in the top half of the fifth inning. It's now Pittsburgh one, St. Louis one. Ellis on the hill for the Pirates, Washburn for the Cardinals. Other acts in the National League this afternoon, Houston at San Diego, and Philadelphia at Chicago. It'll be Flamin against Holtzman in that game at Wrigley Field. The Expos go to Chicago immediately following this afternoon's game for a three-game series against the Cubs. Over in the American League, the Boston-Baltimore game is being delayed by rain, with uh, Boston leading one to nothing. They got their run in the top half of the second inning. Detroit uh, still leads Cleveland three to two in the bottom half of the fifth inning at Detroit, and it's five to nothing for Washington over the Yankees, playing in the bottom half of the fourth inning at uh, Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium in Washington. Here at Shea Stadium in New York, three to one for the New York Mets over the Montreal Expos. The Expos getting their lone run on that home run by John Bateman in the second inning. The first man up for the New York Mets in the bottom half of the third inning will be second baseman Ken Boswell. Back now to Dave Van Horn. All right, Kenny Boswell and then Cleon Jones and Ed Charles here in the bottom of the third for the Mets. This one moving right along, 3-1. to one. The Mets lead the Expos. They've out hit them 5-2. Larry Jaster, left-hander, going for Montreal this afternoon. Larry's a product of the Sandlots of Detroit. Signed with the Cardinals in 1962 for about $60,000. His first offering to Boswell is low and outside, ball one. Boswell is one for one. He got a base hit in the first inning. Beat out an infield grounder. Close play at first base. Jaster was covering. He fouled one back. A ball and a strike. Get in the stands, try to catch it with his umbrella. Almost ripped the umbrella to pieces. Catch pennies from heaven in an umbrella, but not baseballs. Here's a pop-up in the right side of the, just to the right of home plate. Bateman over there. He makes the catch. And that's all for Boswell. One away, and the batter will be Cleon Jones, and then we'll have Ed Charles. Larry's got a brother in the St. Louis organization, Dan Jackson. Don't know, uh, I'll have to ask Larry right now, I don't know where Dan is. Where he's playing. When the Cardinals signed Larry Jasser, they assigned him to the Northern League at Winnipeg, and in his first season, he won four and lost four. He's been in two World Series, 1967 and 1968. First pitch from Larry Jaster to Cleon Jones is low and inside, ball one. One out, nobody on, here in the bottom of the third with the Mets batting. They lead 3-1. The pitch swung on, a high fly ball, lifted out beyond second base. Sutherland back there in the grass makes the catch. Two away. Jaster has pitched in two World Series games. As we mentioned, 67-68. His major league totals... He's got 32 victories and 25 losses and a 3.17 earned run average for four years in the major leagues. Here's a line drive, shoestring catch by Coco LaBoy at third base, and that's all for the Mets. A sharp sinking liner right to LaBoy, who had great reaction there. He got down there and grabbed it for the third out of the inning. So that's all for the Mets. Nothing across here in the third. And at the end of three, it's New York three, Montreal one. Here, the brand new Expos take on the all-famous National League Stars this season. There'll be special fun days, music and entertainment at Jerry Park this year. So get in on the fun and the form a group to go to Jerry Park and root for the Expos and see some of the top stars in baseball in action. 
just call the group sales department at 875-2300 and they'll give you all the details. Everybody's getting Expo Baseball Fever. There's a ticket office near you. Call the Montreal Expos at 875-2300 for ticket information. Get your tickets at any location in minutes by TRS Computers. You get seats of your choice for any Expos home game with no waiting. The price is right, the games are great, so come on out to Jerry Park. Big League Baseball gets to people. All kinds of people live it, feel it. So be part of Major League Baseball this year by seeing the Expos in action at Jerry Park. Totals now after three innings of play for the Mets. Three runs, five hits, no errors. And for the Expos, a run, two hits, no errors. 3-1 ball game. The Mets lead our Expos. And as we go into the fourth inning, once again, here's Russ Taylor. Thanks very much, Dave Van Horn. For the Expos, in the top half of the fourth inning, it's right fielder Rusty Staub, the big left-hand hitter. Gentry throws in there for a call, strike, strike one. All on the count to Rusty Staub, the Expos home run leader. Rusty has hit two home runs, a real long one yesterday. Gentry is all set. Here's the pitch. It's hit in the air, back of shortstop, calling for it in the fringe of the outfield grass and left field is Harrelson, and he's got it for the out. So Staub pops up to shortstop, Bob Harrelson. Which brings up the left fielder, Mac Jones. Jones is currently hitting 375 in the two games played. Mac has knocked in a pair of runs. Mac Jones, big left-hand hitter. Folks in Canada saw him with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the International League back in 1961. Gentry is all set. Here's his first pitch to Jones. Swung on and foul. Up into the upper deck here at Shea Stadium. The rain is still falling. Not quite as heavily as before, but you can see it there. Umbrella's out all over the place. The 0-1 pitch to Jones swung on down the line foul just by inches past the bag at first base and rolls right down the line where right fielder Rod Gaspar goes over for it. Gentry steps off the hill looking around at the outfield. Now comes back on the mound. He's got an 0-2 count on Mac Jones. Jones struck out in the second inning. And here he is in the top half of the fourth inning. Three to one for the men. Low curve ball. One and two the count. In the on-deck circle, Bob Bailey. Outfield shifted over to the right on Jones as he can pull the ball. Mack hit three home runs in spring training. Frank Howard has hit another home run for the Washington Senators. His fourth of the year. Hit it in the fifth. With, oh, there's a high fly into medium right field. Coming in for it is Gaspar. And he's got it for the out. As Jones, that was a real rainmaker, hit it a mile in the air. A lot of wood on the ball, but hit it the wrong way. Straight up. So Jones popped up to right field. That brings up Bob Bailey. Now, Bailey got plenty of wood on the ball in his only appearance in the second inning. He tagged one of Gentry's fastballs for a long out into right center field. Then Tommy Agee way back to the warning track for it. Bob Bailey, one of the Expos power hitters, takes it high and inside, had to back away for ball one. How about that Frank Howard? Had a chance to see Howard in spring training one over the center field wall at Pompano Beach. Ball hit on the ground. Oh, nice stop by Ed Charles at third. Over to first for the out. A brilliant defensive maneuver by the veteran Ed Charles at third. And the Expos are out of order. Three up, three down. For the Expos in the top half of the fourth inning. No runs on no hits and no errors. Nobody left on base. The score after three and a half innings of play. Three to one for the Mets over the Expos. The rain is starting to let up just a little bit. It's still coming down, a very fine drizzle. Some of the fans have started to move back down into the box seat sections. A lot of them still staying up in the first deck under cover. Let's take a moment to look at the other scores in the National League. 
Phillies are batting in the second inning. They lead the Chicago Cubs one to nothing in the second. In the sixth at St. Louis, Pittsburgh and the Cardinals are tied 1-1. Tonight, Houston's at San Diego. Over in the American League, three games all underway. In the fifth, the Washington Senators have the New York Yankees 6 to nothing. Howard's hit two today so far. In the third inning at Baltimore, the Red Sox lead the Orioles 1 to nothing. And in the fifth at Detroit, the Tigers have the Cleveland Indians 3 to 2. So that brings us up to date on the scoreboard. And of course, after every Expos broadcast, you get the details on all the games in the National and American League, as well as the final Expo wrap up, right here on the stage to which you are listening to Expos Baseball. The baseball scoreboard with Russ Taylor after every Expos game. Russ? Well, leading off for the Mets in the bottom half of the fourth inning, left fielder Ron Swoboda. A big fellow with a lot of power. Swoboda singled the right field in the first. Knocked in one of those uh, two Met runs in the first inning. He's uh, making his first regular start against the left-handed pitching of Larry Jaster. Jaster throws, swung on and missed. And Swoboda went right around on that one. won the count on Ron Swoboda. In two appearances so far this year, he's one for two. Pitches low to Swoboda. The count is one and one. Outfield playing Swoboda deep. A lot of respect for his power. And he could hit to any field. The pitch is swung on right down to LaVoy at third. Up with it on the second hop. Over to Bailey at first for the out. Swoboda goes out. Third to first, Coco Lavoie to Bob Bailey. Catcher. In the batter's box now, Jerry Grody, the catcher. Jerry adjusting uh, some of that dirt around the batter's box. Kicks some of it out of his cleats, adjusts his batting helmet, and he's all set. One away here in the, top, in the bottom half of the fourth inning. The pitch is high to Jerry Grody for ball one. Grody has knocked in three runs for the Mets in the two games so far. Pitch to Gordy is swung on, foul in the air. Going back for it is Bateman in front of the dugout. He's got it. Manager Gene Mock held up his hands just in case uh, Bateman got too close. There was still maybe about a foot and a half to go before the dugout steps. So Gordy pops out, fouls out to catcher John Bateman. Well, the game is moving right along. Got off to a bit of a slow start. Bud Harrelson, the batter. Harrelson grounded out short to first in his only appearance so far. Here he is in the bottom of the fourth. Tries to lay down a bunt. Misses. Strike one. I don't think Bud's heart was really in that one. Trying to draw the infield in. Coco LeBoy is well in at third. Infield playing close on Harrelson. He's way right at LeBoy. Out into left field. Harrelson makes the turn. He's heading into second base with a stand-up double. Well, the strategy backfired on Coco. He got in real close. After Harrelson uh, faked that bunt on the first pitch, had Coco been playing a little deeper, he would have had it. It was about an inch and a half off his glove, a real screamer down the line in left field. So Harrelson, the light-hitting Bud Harrelson, is on second with a double. Gary Gentry in now. Gentry struck out in the second inning. Second strikeout victim of Larry Jaster. First pitch swung on and missed. So the Mets with a runner on second base in scoring position. Two away, bottom half of the fourth inning. Gentry the batter. Jaster checks his man. Swung on and missed, strike two. Gentry steps out momentarily. Now he's back in. Tommy Agee in the on-deck circle. If he gets a chance to swing. There are two out. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Gentry. Swung on a miss, strike three. 
Ed Hendry, strikeout victim number three for Larry Chaster. So, Chaster's out without any trouble. The Mets, no runs on one hit, no errors, one man left on base. The score after four complete innings of play, New York Mets three, Montreal Expos one. You know, Major League Baseball is here now, fans, and there'll be special fun dates and music and entertainment and excitement happening at every Expos game. Action on the field and, of course, good times for everybody. Fun and music before and during the games. And a whole cavalcade of special days and nights are being planned for you. Days like Cap Day, Ball Day, Know Your Neighbor Night, Father and Son Nights, Ladies Days, Camera Days. Get with the big league happenings at every Expos game this season. Major League Baseball is here in a big way and everybody's getting tickets for Expos Baseball. They're now on sale near you. You can get yours in minutes. TRS computers do the work for you. You get the seats of your choice for any Expos home game with no waiting. Call 875-2300 for the computer or ticket office nearest you. The best buy for your entertainment dollar is Expos baseball all season long at Jerry Park. Big League Baseball has come to Montreal. Let's take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos baseball network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. Now back to Expo Baseball. John Bateman, leadoff man for the Expos in the top half of the fifth inning, homered in his last appearance, follows it along the third baseline toward the dugout steps of the Montreal Expos. Owen won the count on Bateman. He really tagged one of Gentry's fastballs in his second inning in a deep right center of the wall. Oh, there's a hard hit ball out in the deep center field. Going back for it is A.G. I don't know. He's got it right against the wall. Oh, what a catch by Tommy A.G. 410 feet away. A.G. looked over his shoulder and for a moment it looked as though he had given up on it thinking that the ball would clear that he went right back to the wall caught it against the wall Great play by Tommy Agee in center field. Robs him of extra bases. How about that one, Dave? It's a great play by Agee because, you know, when you have to go back for a ball that's hit that deep, you've got to start worrying about a collision with that wall. But Agee kept right on going, knew exactly where he was, and right against the wall made a great catch. John really tagged that ball well. Cogan LaVoy singled in his last appearance. Take the call, strike. Strike one. Well, Bateman just came within inches of getting home run number two this afternoon. My, he hits that one a long way. Check swing by LaBoy. Ball one. One and one on Coco LaBoy. Left fielder Ron Swoboda playing him deep. A.G. straightaway center. Rod Gaspar in regular right field. Gentry throws. Ball. Two and one the count. As the boy just looked. Bill Freehand. A grand slam home run for the Tigers in the fifth. His first homer of the year. And what a blast that was. The base is loaded. Detroit leads seven to two. Foul back over the screen to the left of our broadcast booth. arrive at Shea Stadium tomorrow to flash up on the big board and they arrive of course in Montreal on Monday. Foul along the third baseline right into the Expos dugout. Cab remains at two and two on Coco LaVoy. LaVoy hitting 375 going into today's game has picked up another hit. He leads the Expos and runs batted in with four. Right hand hitter. One of the two rookies in the starting lineup. Swung on, foul. Into the left to the 
feet back of the left field line. Count remains two and two on Coco Lavoy. The other rookie is Don Hahn. All others are veterans in the Expo starting lineup. Coco Lavoy knocked in 100 runs with Tulsa last year. Takes it high. Full count on Lavoy. Gentry back on the mound, looks around. Two arm stretches. Now he looks down to catcher Jerry Grody for his side. Here's the three and two pitch to LaVoy. Hits his bat. LaVoy is tucked away and it's got it weight on the handle. So it's still three and two. Three balls and two strikes. The Mets are leading three to one. In the top half of the fifth inning, one away. Baseman sending E.G. back to the wall in center. Don Hahn in the on-deck circle. Swung on. A lot of wood on the ball, but too much of it, and it's foul again. Into the seat, back of the left field line. The boy comes right around on that pitch. He was doing that in spring training, too. Came around beautifully on one in the opening day, and hit it 358 feet over the left field fence for a home run. Here's the three and two pitch. It's foul high into the air, back to the screen, out of play. And Coco the boy gives another souvenir to a Mets fan here. The rain is still falling, but not as heavily as at first. A lot of umbrellas still up. Definitely top coat weather here at Shea Stadium this afternoon. Mets leading by two runs. All right, Gentry looks down to Jerry Gordy for a sign. Gets it. Here's the three and two pitch. On the line, down in the left field for at least one. The boy making the turn at first, heading into second base. Here comes the throw by Swoboda, but no throw at all as he just relays it into Bud Harrelson. And Coco Lavoy is in with a stand-up double. His second hit of the afternoon. And what a surprise. This rookie third baseman has been for the Expo so far. Lavoy with a double down the line in left field. Everything Coco hits seems to hug that line. After fouling off uh, quite a number of pitches, he got the one he liked and just lined it past Ed Charles at third base. Russ Gentry had retired eight men in a row up until that double by LaVoy. Gentry doing a pretty good job in his big league debut here today. Here's Don Hahn who struck out in the second. LaVoy along late. There goes Harrelson faking him back to the bag. Gentry looking to Grody for a sign. Checks his man at second. Here's the pitch to Hahn. Swung on and missed. 0-1 to Don Hahn, the eighth man in the Expos batting order. Hahn has had one hit so far, a big single in yesterday's game, knocking in two runs. However, the Expos dropped it after winning their first game 11-10. There goes Harrelson, the throw to second, not in time. The boy with a dive into the bag. Carlson sneaked up on him, but Coco caught it just in time. It was a close play. All by Tom Gorman at second base. Big umpire. All right, Gentry looking down at Grody once again. Check this man again at second base. Here's the pitch to Hahn. He lets it go for ball one. Going outside. One ball and one strike. The boy with a healthy lead off second base. Here's the pitch to Hahn. It's slow. For ball two. Two and one the count now. The Mets fans didn't care for that call by the plate umpire Bill Williams. But I suppose no one really likes the yumps calls, especially when it's your man up on the hill. Two and one pitch to Hahn. 
swung on out into right center field. Going back for it is A.G. with Gaspar. A.G. takes it. LaVoy holds up at second base. Don Hahn flies out to Tommy A.G. in right center field. That brings up Larry Jaster. Jaster grounded out second to first in the third inning. And while Larry Jaster is not a fence buster, he likes his hit. He tagged some long ones during spring training. On occasion, he can hit the ball. Left hand batter, Larry Jaster. Three to one Mets here in the top half of the fifth inning. The Expos with a runner in scoring position on second base, Coco LaVoy. Jaster fakes a bunt, fouls it back up against the screen. With two away. Maury Wills in the on-deck circle. Jaster certainly could help his own cause along by getting on. LaVoy making the turn at third. Here's the play at the plate. again on the scoreboard now those three American League games that are underway New York and Washington Yankees batting in the sixth they trail seven to nothing Senators out in front Frank Howard's hit two home runs play is resumed at Baltimore in the third Red Sox lead the Orioles one to nothing they've been held up because of rain in the sixth at uh, Detroit Bill Freehan's Grand Slam has made it. Detroit 7, Cleveland 2. Over in the National League, one night game tonight, Houston at San Diego, and there are two other games underway in the National League this afternoon. In the 8th at St. Louis, the Pirates and the Cardinals are tied up 1-1. One one. And here as we go to the bottom of the 5th, the Mets 3, the Expos 1. And once again, here's Russ. Leading off for the Mets in the bottom half of the fifth inning, their leadoff man, Tommy Agee, the center fielder. Tommy struck out in the first and really tagged one in the second. A long home run. As he got hold of one of Jaster's fastballs, and that home run by Tommy Agee over the left field wall was a home run in any ballpark in any place in the world. Man, did he hit it. Right-hand hitter, Tommy Agee, American League's Rookie of the Year in 1966 with the Chicago White Sox. Swing to the first pitch. A strike one. 0-1 oh, the count on Agee. He had a 12-game hitting streak uh, last year. He and Cleon Jones were the one-two punch in high school. They played high school ball together. High and inside to Agee. One and one the count. Tommy was an end in football, a forward in basketball, and a mighty fine outfielder with the Mets. What a catch he made off Bateman. One and one pitch, in there for call strike two. One and two the count on Tommy Agee. As this game really has settled down. The best game uh, from the point of view of baseball of the three game series so far. Pitches outside, two and two the count. Although those who love hitting, and everyone loves hitting, can tell you they had more excitement crammed into those first two ball games. A lot of home runs. Swung on a miss for strike three. 
Tommy Agee becomes strikeout victim number four for Larry Jaster. That brings up Rod Gasper, the right fielder. Jasper pops out to third baseman Kogel Lavoy in the first and grounded out Lavoy to first in the second. Here he is in the bottom half of the fifth inning. This, of course, is uh, Gaspar's third appearance. He fouls the first pitch. It's an official ball game, by the way. The rain has uh, let up a bit, and the umbrellas have been put away. The old one pitch. Gasper looks ball one. One ball and one strike, one away in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Outfield playing Gaspar straight away. He bats with a foot in the bucket. Jaster delivers. Gaspar swings back of short. It could be trouble. Sutherland calling for it. And let's see who got it. Sutherland took it right out of the hands of Don Hahn. And actually, Sutherland took it back of shortstop, the Expo second baseman. That one could have been plenty of trouble. We had a near collision, and for a while you couldn't tell whether it was center fielder Don Hahn or second baseman Gary Sutherland taking that ball. So Gasper pops out to the second baseman, actually in shortstop territory. Well, short center field. That brings up Ken Boswell. At an infield hit. Would have been the third out, and that started all the trouble for Jaster. First pitch is in there for a call strike. With two out, Boswell, on a close play, actually due to a mix-up, uh, more or less, the Bailey feel of the ball, and got it over to Jaster, but not in time. Strike two call, as Jaster gets that inside corner. Boswell didn't like the call, shook his head and stepped out of the batter's box. Owen to the count with two away. Larry Jaster really settling down now. Here's the two-strike pitch. Inside. Right across the letters as, ja as uh, Boswell fell away. Boswell hit a home run in yesterday's ball game. Jaster said he delivers. It's hit on the ground, down to Gary Sullivan in the second, over to Bailey at first for the out. So it's three up, three down for the Mets in the bottom half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. The score after five complete innings of play, three to one for the Mets over the Expos. All right, we'd like to take an opportunity right now to remind you that the Expos ticket office in the Dominion Square building will be open this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, from eight. The St. Louis Cardinals will be at Jerry Park on Monday and Tuesday. Then the Expos will be gone to Philadelphia for two days and then coming back for a weekend three-game series with the Chicago Cubs. So we want you to ask about uh, tickets for those upcoming series and especially about the second day that the Cardinals will be in town. That'll be as big a day as the first one. You'll want to see the St. Louis Cardinals. They're there for only two games this time around, so be sure to get a ticket for Tuesday's game, and you can go by the Expo ticket office at the Minion Square building this weekend, anytime between 8.30 and 6, for those of you who can't do that uh, during the week. And then the Cubs will be in town the 19th and 20th, single game on Saturday, and a doubleheader on Sunday, the 20th, a week from this coming Sunday, at Jerry Park. Here in the top half of the sixth inning, the first man up for the Expos is shortstop Maury Wills. Maury grounded out second of first in the first, was called out on strikes in the third. First pitch to Wills, he looks for ball one. Expos has picked up four hits so far off Gary Gentry. Two by Coco LaBoy, a single and a double, a home run by John Bateman, and a single by Larry Jaster. Call strike one on Wills, one and one the count. Only real bad pitch, I suppose, that Gentry made was that one to to Bateman. Outside for ball two, two and one the count. Wills was hitting 333 going into today's game with two runs batted in and a stolen base. 
aside from several great defensive plays. The two and one pitch to Maury. He tries to loop it into left field. It goes foul down the line. Just took sort of a half swing at it. Tried to place it over Ed Charles' head at third base. Today's baseball quiz. Can you identify the man who won most National League stolen base titles and the total? Well, that should be an easy... No, no it's not necessarily an easy question to answer. Oh, it was a hard hit ball by Wills. Unfortunately for him, right to Rod Gasper. Morey came around on it and lined it into right field. But Gasper was there waiting for him. Not the record for most stolen bases. The record for most stolen base titles in the National League. We'll get back to you with the answer a little later on. We'll just leave it there for you to think about it for a while and argue. Gary Sutherland popped out to second base in the first and grounded out third to first. This one is on the ground, down to Harrelson at short. Over to Jones at first for the out. Sutherland grounding out short to first. Two up, two down. Brings up Rusty Stop. Rusty still looking in for his first hit of the afternoon. He popped up to the shortstop in the first and also in the fourth. Rusty with two home runs so far. Off to a good start. First pitch to stop. He looks at a curveball in there for call strike one. He catches that inside corner. The plate umpire is Bill Williams. Nick Colosi at first base, Gorman at second. Next pitch fails to get the corner, and it's ball one. One and one the count. As the Mets lead the Expos three to one in the top half of the sixth inning with two out. Mac Jones in the on-deck circle, waiting for a chance to swing. Inside and low for ball two. Gentry realizes that he can't give Staub anything too good. Rusty can hit to any field and for a great distance. Here's the two and one pitch to Rusty. Low curve ball. Ball three. Three and one the count. Staub looks around. Looks out to right field. He likes to to place his hits as we said earlier. And hit to any field. And he was just checking down the right field line. See where Gaspar is playing him real deep in right field. All of them. Swoboda is shifted over towards center more. Inside for ball four. And Rusty draws a free pass. And I think that is his fourth walk. Jones uh, stopped walked three times in the opening game and once this afternoon. So he's had a free pass to first base on four occasions. That brings up Mac Jones, left fielder. Jones, uh, coming into today's game, was hitting 375 and knocked in two runs. Staub on first base with a walk. Gentry checks his man. The pitch to Jones is low and inside. As that curveball by Gentry broke sharply, low at the knees. Outfield deep on Jones. He has good power. He looks at it high and outside. Two balls and no strikes. Gary Gentry finds he has to pitch carefully to, to Jones as he had to pitch to Rusty Stott. Those big flashing eyes of the Expos left fielder, Mac Jones, just ready to pick up that good pitch. Gentry checks his man. Here's the pitch. Swung on and foul. Back of the screen and up into the top deck and right down into the field boxes. Well, the box seat. Fans always get a thrill out of seeing those balls go into the stands, and there'll be a lot of free ones to Jerry Park this year. He said yesterday, just make sure you keep your eye on the ball. Foul again into the seat. Remember years ago, when the Royals played at Delormier Stadium, 
during the war, there was a shortage on balls, and if a ball was hit into the seat, you had to give it back. They'd give you a free pass for it, but you had to give the ball back. And there were many, many arguments in those days. And later on, of course, after the war, they let you keep them. And these are great souvenirs to have. And if you get down around the, the playing field at all, and the thing to do, of course, is get that ball autographed. Jones, a light grounder down a second. Harrelson up with it and tags the bag. Harrelson, the shortstop, moving in on the bag. Jones didn't want to swing at it. It was sort of an accidental one. He goes out on a fielder's choice. Short second. So for the Expos in the top half of the sixth inning, no runs on, no hits, no errors, one man left stranded. The score after five and a half innings of play, New York Mets three, Montreal Expos one. In the National League, that uh, Pittsburgh-St. Louis game has been broken up now as the Pirates have taken a 3-1 to lead. They were deadlocked at 1-1 in the eighth. St. Louis now batting in the bottom of the eighth. The Pirates scored a couple of runs, and they've taken a 3-1 to lead against St. Louis. Of course, uh, St. Louis coming into this uh, game today with the Pirates uh, had lost two in a row. And unless they come back, they're about to lose their third. The Cardinals uh, will be in here at Shea Stadium against these Mets beginning tomorrow as our Expos take off for Chicago for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday series with the Chicago Cubs. Now, tomorrow, Carl Morton will be going for the Expos, and Rich Nye will be the pitcher for the Cubs. On Saturday, Jim Grant will go again. It'll be Mudcat Grant against Ferguson Jenkins. And then on Sunday, Bill Stoneman will face Bill Hands. I'm sure Bill Stoneman's looking uh, forward to that meeting with Bill Hands on Sunday. Stoney be pitching against his former teammates. So that's the upcoming series with the Chicago Cubs. It will be in Montreal the 20th and the 21st. Well, Larry Jaster has given up six hits in this game so far. Four of them came in that uh, first inning. And he's pitched uh, pretty closely. Answer to the baseball quiz, Max Carey of the Pirates is the NL base stealing king. He won the crown 10 times between the years 1913 and 1925. First pitch to uh, Jones is a call strike one. Russ, let me uh, correct those dates on the Chicago trip uh, into Montreal to play our Expos the 19th and 20th. I think I said the 20th and the 21st, but the Cubs are at Jerry Park Saturday, the 19th, Sunday, the 20th. Jones hits it on the ground down to Sutherland at second. Over to Bailey at first for the out. First man up, Leon Jones. Goes out second to first. Ed Charles stepping in now. Charles knocked in the first run of the game with a single in the left field in the first inning. Bringing in Ken Boswell. Charles is low for ball one. One and the count on the Mets third baseman. The veteran on the ball club. Ron Swoboda in the on-deck circle. Check swing ball. Two balls and no strikes. One away. The attendance Paid attendance, 8,608. Ball three. The total attendance is 8,861. All right. Three and all the count. Charles looks for call strike one. Ed Charles. Hitting 286. Going into it with today's game is a hard hit ball in the deep left field. I don't know. Jones going close to the line. Fair foul. Foul territory. He takes it. Well, if it had been any further, our friend Mr. Ed Charles would have had a home run. However, it did actually curve into the into foul territory right at the foul pole down the line, 341 feet away. Plenty of wood on that one. Two away in the bottom half of the sixth inning. 
Mets still leading three to one. The pitch to Swoboda is swung on foul. Down the line at third base. Oh and one. And some foghorn voice down below us just hollered, let's go Montreal. There he goes again. And well, we'll get our chance to cheer. Cheer loudly. Monday afternoon. Oh, what a great day that should be. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Swoboda. It's high and outside. Counts 1-1. One one. Big afternoon for Frank Howard of the Senators. Two home runs. Jaster delivers. Swoboda swings and misses. 1-2. and two. Jerry Grody in the on-deck circle. Brody's still with his shin guards on with two out. Pitch is high for ball two. Two and two. That Washington score is eight to four in the seventh inning for the Senators over the Yankees. Jasser checking, shakes off a sign from Bateman. Gets the one he wants. Here's the pitch, it's high. So now the count is three and two. The full count on Ron Swoboda. So Jaster will have to put it in there with two away in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Outfield playing him deep. There's a hard hit ball in the left field. Johns is in for it, can't get to it. And it drops in there for a base hit. Swoboda got the pitch he wanted. And that's his second hit of the afternoon out into left field. To intercept Jerry Grody. That was the seventh hit off Larry Jaster. And only the third since that first inning when Jaster gave up the four. Grody, right hand hitter, looking for his first hit of the afternoon. He grounded out second to first in the first. And fouled out to catch a John Bateman in the fourth inning. Pitch is swung on, down a short, Will's up with it, over to second for the force. And Jaster is out without too much trouble, as Grody goes into a fielder's choice. Six to four of you scoring. For the, the Mets in the sixth inning, no run on one hit, no errors. One man left on base. The score after six complete innings of play, New York Mets three, Montreal Expos one. Major League Baseball is here, and the brand new Expos take on all the famous National League stars with special fun dates, music, and entertainment. Excitement happens every minute at every game. Action on the field and good times for everybody. There'll be fun and music before and during all the games, and a whole cavalcade of special days and nights are being planned throughout the season. So get with the big league happenings at every Expos game. Everybody's getting tickets now for Expos Baseball. And there's a ticket office near you. Call Montreal 875-2300 for the ticket office nearest you. Get your tickets at any location in minutes by TRS computers. You get seats of your choice for any Expos home game with no waiting. The price is right and the games are great. So come on out to Jerry Park. Big League Baseball gets to people. All kinds of people live it, feel it. Be a part of Major League Baseball this season by seeing the Expos in action at Jerry Park. We'll take this opportunity to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. Now back to Expo Baseball. Dave Van Horn, the mic is yours. All right, the first pitch is swung on and a slow roller up the third base side stays fair and now it goes foul. Bailey just about had himself an infield hit as Ed Charles and Gary Gentry and catcher Jerry Grody all followed that ball up the third base side. It stayed fair until it got about two-thirds of the way up toward the bag. And then it rolled foul, and the minute it crossed the line, of course, Charles picked it up. So it's just strike one on Bob Bailey. He'll be followed by John Bateman and Coco LaBoy. Bailey is 0 for 2, flied to center, and grounded out to the third baseman. 
Right-hand hitter, Bob Bailey. Three to one ball game. The Mets lead the Expos. Give you the totals here in just a second. Gentry's pitch. Curveball is low and outside. Ball one. One ball and one strike. For the Mets, three runs, seven hits, and no errors through six innings. And for the Expos, a run, four hits, no errors. Three one ball game. And this is settled into quite a battle now between Gentry and Jaster. Here's a strike call. Curveball. a few steps around toward right center for the batter, Bob Bailey. Gentry's fastball swung on, and this one hit well. Center field, A.G. has to go back, going back. He's near the track, and right up against the wall makes the catch. Well, John Bateman chased A.G. to the center field wall in the fifth inning, and now Bob Bailey has done the same thing here in the seventh. shot. If Bob pulled that at all, it would have been long gone. One down, and here's John Bateman. In a home run over the right center wall in the second. And that shot to the 410-foot mark straightaway center field that took A.G. right up against the wall to make the catch. Pitch is down low and inside. One ball and no strikes of John Bateman. this gentry has got good stuff he is quick that fastball really hums and it sails a little bit stuff to hit it's fouled off to the left side coco leboy in the on deck circle made a bare hand stab at that ball one and one one out nobody on top of the seventh here at shea stadium in new york the rain stops sun is trying to come out behind us his curveball swung on. This one hit well to center field. A.G. has time to get back there, though. He's not quite on the warning track. And now right on the edge of the track, he pulls it down. Two away. And the batter, Jose Laboy, the third baseman. He is two for two here today. A single to center in the second. And he doubled down the left field line in the fifth. scored two of their three runs in the first inning, and Tommy Agee gave them their third run with a home run in the second. Pitch low outside, ball one. Bill Freehan has hit his second home run in that Detroit-Cleveland game, and it puts Detroit out in front of the Indians, eight to three in the seventh. Low and away for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Well, Gentry, through, who has been throwing hard in this ball game, if he's going to tire, well, uh, right about now or the next inning or so, we may see the Expos get to him, see how strong Gentry is. Whips the fastball, low and outside, ball three. The outfield is straight away for LeBoy. In the first two games of this series, Coco went three for eight, batting 375 coming into this one this afternoon. Don Hahn is on deck with two outs. Pitch is high and inside. LeBoy draws a walk. That's just the second walk given up by Gentry in this game. He had walked Staub in the last inning. Two away, Don Hahn the batter. LeBoy is on at first. Don is 0 for 2, struck out in the second, and in the fifth, hit a fly ball to center. Gentry to the stretch now, looks at LeBoy, here's the curve ball, high, ball one. Well, needless to say, this is the longest uh, any two starters have gone in this three-game series. A right-hander is loosening up in the Expo bullpen. Here's a comebacker on one hop to Gentry on the mound. The throw to first base gets Hahn, and the side is retired here in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. And the score at the end of six and a half innings here at Chase Stadium in New York. The Mets three, and the Expos one. 
All right, let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. In that game at Wrigley Field in Chicago, it's a one-all tie between the Phillies and the Cubs, now playing in the fifth inning. St. Louis and Pittsburgh. Checking the out-of-town uh, board on this one, we have to double-check it. It's 3-1 uh, to one for Pittsburgh in the ninth inning. The long St. Louis run in the ninth inning and a home run by Mike Shannon. Houston plays at San Diego. In the American League, it's a one-all tie between Boston and Baltimore. They're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Detroit is leading Cleveland way out in front by the score of 8-3, to three, playing in the bottom of the seventh. And as we mentioned, Bill Freehan has hit two home runs in that game, one with the bases loaded. And Washington is leading the Yankees by the score of 8-4, to four, playing in the seventh inning. Frank Howard has hit a pair of home runs for the Senators. Here at uh, Shea Stadium, New York, 3-1 to one for the Mets over the x ball. First man up for the Mets. In the top, bottom half of the seventh inning will be shortstop Bud Harrelson. Here again, Dave Van Horn. All right, Bud Harrelson this afternoon has gone one for two. Grounded out in the second, he doubled down the left field line in the fourth. He'll be followed by Gary Gentry, the pitcher, and then Tommy Agee. Harrelson came into this game batting 250 for the series. And, of course, for the year. 3-1, Mets lead. First pitch, strike call. Jaster got the fastball down the middle. Top knee high. 0-1, the count. Outfield is drawn in, and they're around to the right for Harrelson. Jaster high and outside. Ball one. One ball and one strike. Over 45,000 the first day, down to 14,000 plus yesterday, and a little over 8,000, almost 9,000 here today. Here's a foul ball lifted high into the air, out of play off to the right into the box seat section. One ball and two strikes. Well, I know that when this New York Mets ball club comes to Montreal, you'll be out at the ballpark to see this Gil Hodges team. They've got high hopes for the Mets this year here in New York. Here's a shot over to Wills, the shortstop going to his left, makes the grab, throw to first, and Harrelson is out of there. One away. The batter will be the pitcher, Gary Gentry. He'll probably get a pretty fine reception when he steps up to the plate here. To the Mets fans, and he does. Youngster pitching in his first major league ball game. This uh, affair here this afternoon, very close to being a 1-1 ball game. Those two runs that the Mets scored in the first. Here's a strike call on Gentry. Came with two outs. Boswell was at the plate. He hit a bounder to Bailey's right. Expo first baseman went over and grabbed it through to Jaster. Close play at first. And Boswell was called safe. And that opened the door to uh, two-run inning in the first. Next pitch is fouled back. 0-2. Here comes Jaster, and he's high with this one. One ball and two strikes. Again, Jaster delivers a swing and a miss. Strike three, and that's all for Gary Gentry. He has struck out three times here this afternoon as Jaster logs strikeout number five. St. Louis Cardinals have lost their third straight game. They were beaten three to two by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ellis the winner, Washburn the loser, 10,000 witnessing that game at St. Louis. Well, here's Tommy Agee now at the plate with two outs and nobody on here in the bottom of the seventh. A.G. Uh, has struck out twice. He hit a home run in the second. Jaster of his five strikeouts has uh, gotten Gentry three times and A.G. twice. And Tommy hit that towering home run down the left field line. Larry's next pitch. Low, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. But A.G. really gave that one a ride. Had it not hit the screen on the left field foul pole, would have gone into the upper deck. Here's a good drive, left center, going back is Hahn. He gives up. This one is a home run for Tommy Agee, his second of the game. Well, Tommy Agee becomes the third 
player today in the major leagues to hit two home runs. Bill Freehan has hit two for Detroit. Frank Howard's hit two for Washington. And here at Shea Stadium, Tommy Agee got, just got his second round trip for this one over the left center wall some 396 feet away. Two out, pitch to Rod Gaspar, swung on, lifted high out into center field. Coming in is Don Hahn, gets under it and makes the catch, and that is the end of the inning. One run on one hit, A.G.'s second home run of the game. No errors, nobody left. The score after seven, the Mets four, the Expos one. Two of the most exciting players in the National League will be in Montreal May 9th, 10th, and 11th. We are speaking of Pete Rose, the National League batting champion, and Johnny Bench. Well, they say is the greatest catcher in the National League today. They say the greatest catcher since Gabby Hartnett. But we'll have an opportunity of seeing those two players with the Cincinnati Red Legs when the Reds play at Jerry Park against the Expos May 9th, 10th, and 11th. Tickets, of course, can be purchased from the Expo office. All you have to do is dial 875-2300 or drop into the office. Jerry Park, by the way, opens its ticket office on Monday at noon, and that ticket office will be remain open all season long. So it's the Cincinnati Red Legs, May 9th, 10th, and 11th at Jerry Park, in case you're planning way ahead, as most baseball fans like to do, especially those in the northeastern United States and up around Ottawa. If you're planning to take a few days off, put aside May 9th, 10th, and 11th. the eighth inning, the first man up for the Expos will be a pinch hitter, Ty Klein. He'll be in to swing for Larry Jaster, as Gene Mock knows that he's got to get something going with only two more innings to go. Four to one for the Mets over the Expos, Ty Klein, a pinch hitter for Larry Jaster. All right, Ty Klein, the pinch hitter, left-hand hitter, steps in. Let's see what Ty has done here as Gentry gets ready to pitch to him. First one is high and outside, ball one. Klein is 0 for 1. He's played in all games now of this series. He's only had one official at bat. The next pitch, a little high, ball two. And we'll be getting a right-hander coming in from the bullpen. Looking out there, could be uh, Jerry Robertson. Gentry's next offering is down low, and he gets behind on Ty Klein, 3-0. Third baseman, Ed Charles, in on the edge of the grass. First baseman, Cleon Jones, over near the bag, checking the line. Field swung around to the right for Ty Klein. Here's Gentry's fastball, and it's taken for a strike call. Three balls and one strike. We're in the top of the eighth. The Mets four, the Expos one. Gentry to the windup and the pitch. Strike two call. Got the fastball by Klein. Gentry gave up two hits in just two innings. In the second, a home run to Bateman and a single to LeBoy. And in the fifth, a double to LeBoy and a single to Jasper. And LeBoy was thrown out of the plate. This one is by Klein for strike three. So that'll bring Maury Wills to the plate now with one out and nobody on. Right-hander Gentry, the pitch to Wills. It's low for a ball. Outfield uh, drawn in a few steps all the way around for Maury. Gentry looking down for the sign. He's got it. The wind-up and the pitch. Swung on by Wills and a fly ball. Straight away center field. Ag coming in for this one a few steps. He's got it. 
There's two away. Gary Sutherland will be the batter. He's 0 for 3. Popped up to the second baseman and grounded out twice. Once to the third baseman, Ed Charles. Once to the shortstop, Bud Harrelson. Right-hand hitter, Gary Sutherland. Gentry's windup and the fastball right down the pike taken by Gary. Strike one called. The Gentry has had exceptionally good stuff today. His live ball, his fastball has really been alive and moving around. He's had great control. Blowing outside. Ball one. One ball and one strike. The Expos will be flying out of New York right after the game this afternoon, heading for Chicago, where they begin their three-game set with the Cubs tomorrow afternoon. This pitch is swung on. Looper down the right field line. Coming over for it is Gaspar. It's a foul ball. He can't get to it. Way down the line in right. One ball and two strikes on Gary Sutherland with two outs here in the eighth. Nobody on. Gentry's been very stingy, giving up just four hits. Two extra bases, Bateman's home run in the second, and the boys double down the line in the fifth. Here's the one-two pitch to Sutherland inside for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. starting to break up a little bit. Here's curveball swung on, and a bounder goes to the left side of the infield. Harrelson, the shortstop, up with it. Throw to first, and by one step, they get Gary Sutherland. So another three-up, three-down inning log by Mr. Gentry here in the eighth with nothing across for the Expos. And after seven and a half, the score at Shea remains. The Mets four and the Expos one. Well, a while ago, we were reminding baseball fans that the Cincinnati Red Legs come to town with Pete Rose and Johnny Bench May 9th, 10th, and 11th. A reminder, too, that next week, when the St. Louis Cardinals come to town, we'll start see some of baseball's top stars in action. Hopefully, Bob Gibson will get a chance to pitch. Joe Torre, who has traded the Cardinals this year. Lou Brock, considered one of the fastest men on base paths. Kurt Flood, another speedster out in center field, and Veda Pinson, who joined the Cardinals this year. At Gibson, sorry, Brock, Flood, and Pinson at Jerry Park uh, next week as the Expos open their season on Monday, Monday afternoon. But a reminder to baseball fans, if you can't, uh, if you can't get a ticket for Monday's game, there will be plenty of opportunities for you to see the Expos in action this year. Check your National League schedule and pick out the team you want to follow at Jerry Park this year and then call the Expos at 875-2300. Bottom half of the eighth inning. And the first man up for the New York Mets will be the second baseman, Ken Boswell. Well, Larry Jaster went seven innings, gave up Eight hits, struck out five, and uh, of course the Mets scored four runs, all earned off Larry Jaster. Carol Sambera is the new Expo pitcher, a right-hander, coming on here. So far he's worked but a third of an inning. He got that big out in the first game on opening day. Carol Sambera facing Ken Boswell. First pitch was a strike. Here comes the 0-1 now. Swung on and a ground ball goes to Sutherland at second base. Throws to Bailey and Boswell is out of there. One away here in the bottom of the eighth for the Mets. They've led all the way. They scored two runs in the first. Expos. Catcher John Bateman hit his home run in the second. Made it 2-1. Then Agee hit his in the second. Put the Mets out in front 3-1. And it stayed that way until Agee hit his second home run of the game in the seventh. And that's uh, the score that we have, 4-1. to one. We're at the bottom of the eighth. Here is 
Cleon Jones, the first baseman of the New York Mets, right-hand hitter. Cleon this afternoon has gone one for three. Sembera, the right-hander, fires down low, ball one. Jones got a base hit in the first. Popped up to Sutherland in the third, grounded out to Gary in the sixth. Sembera's windup, the fastball strike called. One ball and one strike. A couple of thousand seats will be, bleacher seats will be put on sale on Tuesday. Prior to the second Expos game of the St. Louis Cardinals next week at Cherry Park. So you'll want to be planning now if you're going to be after one of those bleacher seats to get out of the ballpark early on Tuesday because there'll be a limited number on sale. And when you have a chance, Sembera's next offering was wide of the plate. Two balls, one strike. When you have a chance, get by the Expos office in order that you can get your tickets for that big Chicago series a week from this coming weekend. Here's a bounder foul behind third and in front of the coaching box down the line. Two balls and two strikes to Cleon Jones. Cleon Jones first came up with the Mets back in 1963 for just a couple of games. Became a regular in the 65 season. Lifetime batting average in the majors of 267. He had to duck out of the way of this fastball sail high and inside. Three balls and two strikes. Well, the Cardinals are winless after three days of the campaign. Here's a bouncing ball to the left side that Wills takes care of. The throw to first, they've got Cleon Jones and two away. Russell will give you the rundown on all the ball games on the baseball scoreboard right after this game ends. Willie Orton's homered for Detroit. Mickey Stanley's homered for Detroit in the eighth. Boy, the Tiger bats are really booming today. They're leading Cleveland right now 9-3 to three in the eighth. Pitches high and inside, and that uh, forces Ed Charles to bite the dust. 1-0 the count. Young Carol Sambera. The windup, the right-hander delivers, a swing and a miss. 1-1. One and one. Sambera came up through the Houston organization. Here's a check swing foul off to the right side. I thought that was off the bat of Ed Charles. The scoreboard has shown ball two. It was off Charles' bat, wasn't it? Yes, I thought so. Well, we'll see. Here's Sembera's pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's it. So Sembera comes on to put the side down. One, two, three here in the eighth. And that's the first time this uh, second time this afternoon. Jaster did it in the fifth. Second time the Mets have been retired in order with nothing across. The score as we head for the ninth, the Mets four and the Expos one. All right, let's check some out-of-town scores. It's Chicago. Okay, now as we break a moment for Expo Baseball, we'll take a look now at the official weather forecast. Windy and mild for this afternoon, with occasional showers likely and chance of thunder showers high about 60 degrees. Cloudy and turning colder with chance of a few showers, low 40 to 45. For Friday, gradual clearing. And windy and cooler, high temperatures in the mid-50s for tomorrow. The precipitation probability, 70% for this afternoon, 50% for tonight. Current temperature and further weather information in a moment after this brief message from your local A&P. If you're looking for great food values, A&P's got them, and in every department. For example, save now on A&P's super ride quality boneless beef roasts. Cross rib, bottom round, or chuck, your choice at one low A&P price. 99 cents a pound. And A&P gives you fine grain-fed steer beef with no fat added. You're guaranteed to get good eating. And make the most of your roast by serving it with delicious fresh asparagus, large tender spears, 
only 39 cents a pound. Also featured in the produce department, U.S. number one new Florida white potatoes, five pound bag, 59 cents. And this week, stock up and save on A&P salt, plain or iodized, 26 ounce package, just five cents. Save two with Harvest Pride brand frozen vegetables, peas, corn, peas or carrots, 10 ounce package, only 10 cents. So this week, look to A&P for terrific savings on top quality merchandise. That's A&P, the store that cares about you. And with light rain, 56 degrees. And the wind south, 16 to 24 miles an hour. The humidity, 94%, with the barometric pressure falling at 29.60 inches. Once again, windy and mild for this afternoon, with occasional showers likely. High temperatures into the 60s. And that's the latest weather information, courtesy of A&P, the store that cares about you. Come see and you'll save at A&P. Stay tuned for the next A&P weather report at 6 p.m. Now back to Expo Baseball. Gentry now deals to Mac Jones, a line drive, right field, base hit. Mac Jones gets aboard. That's the first hit given up by Gentry since LeBoy got a base hit, or rather, excuse me, Jaster got a base hit in the fifth. And only the third runner that the Expos have had on since the fifth. But with one out, there's a runner aboard. Fifth hit off Gentry. And the batter, Bob Bailey. So don't go away. The Expos aren't through. Not yet. With one out, there's one on. Curveball swung on, bounded up the left side of the infield. Charles goes to second for one, and that's all they'll get. No chance for a double play as Mac Jones came hard into second base. And the second baseman, Boswell, could not make the throw to first. So Bailey's on on the fielder's choice. Two away. And the batter, John Bateman. The exposed catcher. Two outs now. Gentry, looking down to Jerry Grody for the sign, has got it. He goes to the stretch and checks his runner at first. Bailey, the pitch, swung on, a base hit, left field. Bailey will have to hold up at second, right up on top of the ball quickly. Ron Swoboda fires it into the infield. Runners at first and second now with two outs as Bateman singles. His second hit of the afternoon. The sixth off Gentry. Bailey at second, Bateman at first, and here is Coco LaBoy. LaBoy had a home run here opening day. Came into this game hitting 375 and leading the club in RBIs with four. The boy at the plate represents the tying run. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and this is a drive to deep left center going over as A.G. running and gets by him and goes to the wall. A.G. picks it up off the wall, run, one run is home. And LaVoy is in with a stand-up double as Bateman holds up at third. Coco LaVoy with his second double of the day. He's gone three for three with a walk and drove in his fifth run of the campaign. As Bailey scored, run number two coming around from second base. And we're going to get a pinch hitter for Don Hahn as Gil Hodges comes out to the mound. Al Jackson, the little left-hander, is warming up in the bullpen. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. You're listening to Expo Baseball over WHRL Albany, a division of the Stereo Radio Broadcast System. Now back to Expo Baseball. Well, rookie right-hander Gary Gentry receives a standing ovation from the New York Mets fans as he walks into the dugout, as manager Gil Hodges decides that in a very close situation like this in the ninth inning, it's better to come in with the left-hander, and it looks like Al Jackson warming up, taking his final warm-up pitches before coming in. 
A great pitching performance so far by Gary Gentry. He weakened here in the ninth inning, giving up those three hits and that one run. So uh, for Gary Gentry, in the uh, the innings he worked, the entire ball game, right up to well eight and two thirds innings, he gave up four runs and eight hits. And we're going to take a look at Al Jackson, the left-hander. Manny Mota is in the on-deck circle, so he'll pinch it for Don Hahn. So we'll have to wait for the, the announcement that Jackson is coming in before we get the announcement on Manny Mota. Mona is in the on-deck circle. Well, it's not going to be Jackson. It's going to be Cal Kuntz. Cal Kuntz will come on here instead of Jackson. And Kuntz uh, has had less warm-up time than Jackson. But manager Gil Hodges decided to go with Cal Kuntz. We saw him the other day. He's a right-hander, 6-1. Cal Kuntz worked two innings, gave up three earned runs on two hits. Coming in for the boy at second is Ron Brand. So Brand will take over on the base path for the boy. He's got excellent speed, Ron Brand at second. John Bateman is the runner at third. Runners are at second and third. And the batter will be Manny Mota. Now Manny has had only one trip to the plate. And uh, he was hitless yesterday in a bench hitting role. Cal Kuntz will face Manny Mota here with two outs, the top of the ninth, and the Expos rallying again, showing that they've got that tremendous spirit and that great heart to come back in a ball game. Four to two now, and the tying run at second base. Manny Mota at the plate. Boy, we have not lacked for excitement in any one of these games. The right-hander, Cal Coons, getting ready to pitch to Manny Mota now with runners at second and third. Coons looks down to Grody for the sign. He's got it. Here's the pitch, and it's low outside, ball one. Eight and two-thirds innings. Gave up two runs earned. Seven hits. Three in this inning, including LaBoy's double. The 1-0 pitch. Low and outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. The fans here at Chase Stadium getting very nervous now about this one. They've been coasting along with a three-run lead. Then Gentry got in trouble here in the ninth. Now Cal Kuntz coming on, trying to save this victory for Gary Gentry. And the Expos threatening curveball is down low. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Manny Moto looking up to the third base coach. It's Lowry. Bateman, the runner at third. Brand at second. Outfield around to the right for Moda. Right hand hitter. Kunz has the side. He goes to the stretch. Kicks and deals. Curveball low and outside. Ball four. The bases are loaded. The bases are loaded. Brand at second and Bateman at third, the responsibility of Gentry, and now Coons is responsible for Moda at first base. And the pinch hitter will be Don Bosch, who will bat left. Don Bosch coming on to bat here for the pitcher, Carol Sembera. Expos are giving it their 
best shot here in the ninth. Bosch, left-hand hitter. Kuntz delivers. High outside, ball one. Now Kuntz is having trouble finding the strike zone here. One ball and no strikes. There are two outs and the base is loaded in the top of the ninth. The Expos have fought back again. They're down by two, four to two, the Mets lead. Bones has the side. All runners lead. The pitch swung on, foul, tipped at the plate. Bounces over to the right side and into the box seat. One ball and one strike. That ball is hit. You can bet your bottom dollar that John Bateman will be moving because Ron Brandt at second base representing the tie and run is going to be right on top of him. A ball and a strike now to Don Bosch. Runners lead. Kuntz has the sign. The stretch and the pitch high inside. Two balls and a strike. Outfield is around to the right for Bosch and shallow. They're all pulled in. Right side of the infield, back deep. Shortstop Harrelson around toward second base and about a step off the grass. Two balls and one strike. The hold at the belt and the pitch. Swung on, line drive, center field. A.G. gets under it. He's got it. came on, walked Moda to load the bases, and then got Don Bosch to line out to center field to Tommy Agee. Bosch hit the ball well, but it was a line drive right to the center fielder. And as we said, the Expos gave it their best shot here in the ninth, but couldn't pull it off. In the ninth, they score a run on three hits, no errors in the field, and three men left on base. The final score here at Chase Stadium in New York the New York Mets 4, the Montreal Expos 2, and I'll be back with a brief recap of the game in just one minute. Now that spring is full upon us, it's time to start thinking about that lawn and garden. And how about those rooms that need painting or that paneling job for the basement? There's no better time than now to do the chores that you'll be just too busy to do this summer. And the finest place around for the materials you'll need for your spring work is Davy Building Materials in Sand Lake, just off Route 43 on Rikers Lake Road. A complete line of true temper garden tools and Astro fertilizer and grass seed for the outdoor work. And for inside, it's Glidden paints and varnishes, Waltex wallpaper, and Abitibi paneling for that professional look. So don't wait. Stop in soon and find what you'll need for your home and garden at a price that will please. Remember, too, that all you'll ever need in plumbing is available at Davy Building Materials. Riker Lake Road, just off Route 43 in Sand Lake. Open from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m., seven days a week. Well, first of all, here's the line score on the ball game for the New York Mets. Four runs, eight hits, and no errors. And for the Montreal Expos, two runs, seven hits, and no errors. Two of the four Mets runs were scored in the first inning after two were out. Two runs on four hits. Then Tommy Agee hit his first home run of the game in the second and his second home run of the afternoon in the seventh inning. The Expos scored first on John Bateman's second inning home run and then picked up their second run in the ninth inning, one run on three hits. As uh, Coco LaVoy drove in a run with his second double of the day, he went three for three with a walk and picked up an RBI, and Bateman, of course, with the other RBI. Ag driving in two runs, uh, Ed Charles and Ron Swoboda drove in the other two met runs. We'll have more on the game in just 60 seconds. Major League Baseball is here. The brand new Expos take on the all-famous National League stars. There'll be special fun dates, music and entertainment. Excitement will happen every minute of every game. 
action on the field and good times for everybody in the stands. Fun and music before and during every game. And a whole cavalcade of special days and nights are being planned throughout the season. Get the big league happening at Jerry Park this year and see the Expos in action. Remember a box seat for the Expos this year costs $350, which means if you buy the box seat before the season gets underway, you save $35. Reserve seats cost $250 each, which means there's a saving of $19.50. For further ticket information, you can write to the Montreal Expos Baseball Club, Mezzanine Floor, 1010 St. Catherine Street West, or telephone 875-2300, area code in Montreal, 514. Well, the winning pitcher here this afternoon is Gary Gentry, winning his first Major League ball game. He went eight and two-thirds innings, gave up seven, uh, well, he gave up two runs, both earned, seven, eight hits. He struck out three, walked two. The loser is Larry Jaster, who went the first seven innings for the Expos. Larry gave up four runs, he struck out five, gave up a total of seven hits. Carol Sembera worked the eighth inning for the Expos, struck out one. So the winner is Gentry, the loser is Jaster, and the Mets take the series two games to one, and it's on to Chicago for the Montreal Expos. If you uh, want to take a look at any possible turning points in the game, I guess the big one came in that first inning when uh, Larry Jaster struck out Tommy Agee, who led off. Rod Gasper popped out to third base. Then with two out, Ken Boswell hit a slow roller down to, not a slow roller, actually a hard roller down to Bob Bailey, who went wide at first base. Bailey got the ball. There seemed to be a bit of hesitation. I don't know whether it was because Bailey was waiting for Jaster to get to the bag, threw, and Boswell beat the throw by just a fraction of a section, and he got on, by a fraction of a second, and he got on. Then uh, Cleon Jones followed with a single, Boswell going all the way around to third, and Ed Charles came through with a single to left field, sending in... Uh, the runner, Boswell, with the first run of the game. And uh, later, Ron Jones scored on a single by Ron Swoboda to right field. So those were two important runs. The inning should have been over had uh, the play come off properly. But that's the way it goes in baseball. A lot of action, a lot of excitement, a lot of thrills, and a lot of disappointments. The Expos played well this afternoon. They have shown us in the three days here at Shea Stadium in New York that they're going to provide Montreal baseball fans Baseball fans in the Ottawa area, northeastern United States, with plenty of excitement this year. For the Mets, four runs and eight hits and no errors. For the Expos, two runs and seven hits and no errors. The winning pitcher was Gary Gentry, and the losing pitcher was Larry Jester. Well, that's just about it from Shea Stadium. We'd like to thank our engineer, Ricky Phillips, of the Hughes Sports Network. And we've hope, we hope that you have enjoyed this three-game set with the New York Mets and will be with us tomorrow at 10 minutes past 2 o'clock when we're in Chicago at Wrigley Field. Carl Morton against Rich and I, our Expos against Leo DeRoche's Chicago Cubs. And now this is Dave Van Horn, along with Russ Taylor, saying so long from Shea Stadium. This baseball broadcast has been a presentation of the Expos Baseball Radio Network.